Right, so we're looking at a Pioneer S SLW 500 subwoofer. Why would you want to look at one of these? Well, the main reason is they're five pounds each. It's about seven dollars. I bought two for ten pounds. Anyway, so they are designed as a subwoofer to go underneath the rest of your hi-fi kit. Um, I've no idea why they're selling them so cheaply. I assume they were an optional accessory for one of the Pioneer ranges and now they've got an overstock of them. But for £5 you can't go wrong. Or can you? Uh, so at the rear you've got a single port, um, some basic clip terminals and a label. However, underneath, I have a single driver. The driver probably counts as a six inch, five and a half or six. I mean, add a little bit for the surround and you're probably six inch on the dot. In the box, you get the unit itself, um, a thin kind of jump lead cable to attach it, some stick on feet, and a huge warning leaflet, which is just warning you of all the dangers that you might kind of electrocute yourself or trip over it or something else. There's no actual instruction manual because this is an optional accessory for another Pioneer system. However, if you do look on the internets, you can find the instructions and details about the performance of the driver. Performance wise, I was expecting this to be terrible but it's actually surprisingly good. It's almost worthy of the Pioneer name. I think it's primarily designed to use the surface underneath it as some kind of sounding board because it certainly sounds much better when it's this orientation. They sell it with stick on feet to mount it vertically. But if you did mount it vertically, I would suggest putting it against a wall in order to get the effect of the soundboard. Um, I'm kind of taking a gamble on it because at five pounds you kind of you should, but I've got it rigged up to my kitchen system, which is a couple of little two inch drivers. Um, and understand, you'll appreciate that the two inch drivers lack base a little bit. It's just running full range at the moment off the amp. Now I've learned from other loudspeaker videos not to play you real music because they copyright police get on you. Um, but if we just play some tones through, I was very surprised to, um, discover that the the box itself seems to peak at around 80 Hertz but you actually have reasonable response all the way down to to 28 is the lowest that I can hear it here and I suspect that's actually the limit of my hearing although I've pretty good hearing um, but very surprised that you actually get quite a decent range of frequency response out of it. Now obviously I'm going to try and use it with a good low pass filter on it, um, but I'm getting, I'm getting the highest response about 80, but I am getting a good drop all the way down, as I say, down into the kind of low 30s, high 20s. And certainly for five pounds, that's doing very well. I might try and tear it apart some more and see if we can get in and, and see what the rating of this driver is. But if this doesn't come off properly, I'm not gonna kind of risk damaging it. So it turns out this cover is glued on. It looks like it should be screwed on, but they've actually chosen glue. There's no other screw heads or anything on the whole box as far as I can see. It looks like the whole thing is glued together. You can look in the port and see the front of it. Uh, but now to pop this out. So the driver's held in as you might expect by little self-tapping screws. What's quite interesting is that the driver's mounted on a piece of machined MDF but the rest of the case is just particle board. I ran it at reasonably high volume before and the surface of the bottom was flexing quite a lot, which you'd expect from particle board. 
but the driver doesn't look too too bad at all. Pioneer 14003 Papa Alpha X-Ray Tango Whiskey, China. There's nothing wrong with China. Decent sized magnet for that size of cone. And looking at the size of the rubber surround, it should be able to handle a reasonable amount of excursion. The reason I bought two was I was thinking of doing an isobar isobaric configuration and mounting one on top of the other because I assumed the low range response for these boxes would be terrible. But as I said, with a bit of test toning, the low range response seems decent. Um, so I'll probably just run them as a pair, or maybe even individually, I don't know, keep one as a spare, put it in the loft. Um, but let's see if we can look up that driver on the interwebs. If we just take a quick look inside, you can see it is actually braced. And the end of the port has some damping material on it, presumably to stop port noise, but otherwise it's just a very simple glued fiberboard construction. Something I didn't mention earlier on is there's no kind of crossover whatsoever in the cabinet. It's just a full range, or rather it's just a straight loudspeaker through to the terminals. There's no filters at all in this box. So the internet does know about this loudspeaker. There's not a huge number of results, but the results that are there are quite interesting. What's more interesting is that the replacement cost would appear to be right around the $75, $80 mark. Not, even, not that you'd necessarily ever pay that for the genuine woofers, but given that we paid £5, so about $7.50 for the whole cabinet, and given what our testing so far has revealed, which is that the box drops quite well and appears to be quite musical, I'm actually quite pleased with this as a purchase and I suspect they won't be in stock at the UK supply for a huge amount more time but I would suggest if you can get hold of one. I mean you could even modify this for a car. I'd be interested to see how it handles a decent amount of amplification. I might crack out an amp with a, um, a DSP on it because I'm keen to hear them with some um, low pass filtering. Uh, but yeah, so far, very, very pleased with the purchase. Hello Crown XLS 1000. Nice little amplifier this. Um, I wouldn't use it for a massive rig for a long time, but it's it's quite useful in um, its versatility. It's very light um, and it contains a lot of quite useful options. Where should we start? Okay, it's quite loud. Let me do some listening and I'll get back to you. Okay, I've given it a few minutes listening now. And the results are actually what you'd completely expect, which is that the if you filter it too high, you get a lot of punch and a lot of what I, I call um, true bass, so not quite sub. Um, but because of the relatively small box and relatively small driver, that punch bass overrides the sub quite a lot. So I'm actually after low range extension. Um, so by all means, if you get one, try and experiment with it yourself. But I'm much preferring listening to it with something like, to be honest, my first guess was about spot on. Something like a 125 um, or maybe even a bit lower because it's it's not that it can't do the sub, it's just that it seems to be much more efficient at higher frequencies. Now I've got quite a soft sub feel coming in and it's able to take a lot more of the of the wattage of the amp. Kind of 90 or so. Um, 
if you've got the luxury of a DSP, brilliant. I mean, even on full range, it did it did okay. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to listen to it, but in terms of earlier on, I just put it in series with the little boxes I had, and the balance was it was all right. It was a nice, decent, low range extension. It is a ported box, obviously. So I was getting a little bit of that kind of church organ lack of harmonics that you get on ported boxes sometimes, but yeah, it's good. Very good. So overall opinions of this little Pioneer sub. Extremely good value for money at five pounds. Effectively, just buy loads of them and take the drivers out and build yourself a car install. Or even just get, get three or four in a car. Um, I've just fed it, it's rated at 100 watts RMS. So it claims. Um, and I've just fed it probably about 60 watts RMS low pass filtered. Um, and it took it quite well, but you could hear it starting to extend a bit too much. So it can't take a huge amount of volume, but to be honest, unless you're massively inconsiderate to your neighbours, it would do your average house really quite well. I mean, it would be good for a home theatre install or something like that, because you could easily put this behind the sofa, or a couple of them. I think the key to greatness with this is to have several. Um, and to be honest, at this price, you can afford it as well. Anyway, hope that's been useful for some of you. Um, just a quick note, if you do want to take one apart, you don't need to take the fabric off this uh, plastic ring like I did. If you just put something in and lever it off, as soon as you crack the glue, this plastic ring will come off and then you can get at the driver to work on it. Uh, but yeah, I better tidy up the kitchen now before the rest of the house comes home.